hello and welcome. My name is Logan, aka Coding Doctor 101. Uh, first time on Twitch, I usually do YouTube videos. I do tutorials and stuff over various programming languages. Uh, today we're going to work on globals and flowgorithm, which is not necessarily possible, but there is a nice workaround where we are able to do that in itself. Um, after that, we may try and do a side project that I've been wanting to do, and yeah, we'll just see how time goes and we'll go from there. So, starting with the flowgorithm, we're going to try and do a global instead of flowgorithm. So, first thing I want to do is just do a declare and I am going going to try to see if we can get this to work. So just set that as a string test. Um, for those of y'all who do not know, a global is a variable that can be accessed throughout the entire program from one spot. So you can set other variables, you can for instance, you could take have a global with a value of 10 and you can use that global later on in the program whenever you feel like it or whenever it's needed. A uh, global is not something that is changed. You should never change a global. So we need to make sure we can't go in change to global as this process. Um, how we're going to do this is we're going to use uh, functions to simulate a global. Uh, we're going to call a function have it immediately assign the value on return. So it's not technically a global, but it's going to act like a global all the same. So we'll do global test and parameters. We're not adding anything. We're just returning return type. It'll be a string. And for the return variable, I usually just call it return. Then we'll hit OK and done. The global test. Okay. Cool. So you see, we are in global test. Uh, it has the fine string of return, and we're going to assign that a value of test. And then over here, since this is a string, we will need to make sure we have open and close quotation marks. And then inside, uh, this is a pseudo global. And then back on our main program with our string test that we made, we will assign test to global test. We're going to assign it to our function and that will take the value we get from that and move it into test. Then let's take an output from that and see if we get the answer we want. Um, so all we need to do is put test in and we'll see if this works. Program change called global test. Oh, I cannot spell. That's why. Sorry, everyone. That is my bad. Let's try again. Hey, this is a CO global. Cool. So we can do globals like this. And that's probably hard to see, so let me zoom in a bit. All right. So cool. That means we can do a pseudo global in flowgorithm. It's not the perfect thing, and you could wind up with several functions over here, but for something small, it should work properly. So let's see if we can do a new one. We'll, we'll go from there. All right, so let's try and do a test program using the pseudo globals. All right, so what should we do? 
Um, hmm. What's a good program to do? Anyone in chat? If there is a chat, y'all can offer suggestions. String. Uh, let's do. Please enter a number. And yeah, we'll call this prompt. Actually, mm, no, let's do an integer and we'll say user number. We'll have the user enter number and let's see, formula for pi is pi r squared. So we'll just do um, area of a circle using the pseudo global. So user number and then we'll do an output real fast. Please enter the radius of the circle. Uh, this is just this just says please enter the radius of a circle. I don't know how well this is showing up. I can't increase the size, so I apologize for that. But just please enter the radius of a circle. We'll hit done. Um, we'll also declare another variable, and we'll call this um, radius squared. So SQR is all I'm going to put. Um, after our, also we'll do another one. We'll do another sign, and we'll say this is going to be pi. Actually, not a sign. My bad. That should be a declare, and that's just going to be. We're just going to call that pi, and this will be a real number. I cannot work. So we'll just do pi. Alright, also we'll do another declare and this will also be a real number and we'll call it result. And okay. That should be pretty much all hopefully. If not, we'll come back and add more. Next, uh, under the output We'll do an input, and that's just going to be user number. We'll hit OK. And then, uh, first thing we need is because it's pi r squared, so we need to get the radius squared. So we will do a sign, and we'll say on the variable side, it's going to be radius sqr. And then it will be user number times user number and we will hit OK so that should give us that and then we need the value for pi so we're going to use the pseudo globals for this so up here to the two ovals we'll hit add a function function name pi value set return a real number return value I like return that way I know what it's doing it makes stuff simple and we'll hit done and then all we're gonna do is come in here assign return to 3.14 And then we'll come back to main. And then what we need to do is we need to assign pi equals pi value PAL set. Hopefully this is correct and I will double check. Pi value set. 
spelling is always difficult in development for unknown reasons. So now we have the value of pi, which I'm just going to use 3.14. The logarithm does have a value set for pi, but we're just this is just a test case, so 3.14 should be fine for us. Now we will use result to get both of these. So assign result, and it will just be pi times radius squared. And we'll hit OK. And then we'll do an output. We're going to say the area is that. So in the flow rhythm, uh, this, is, this is a string and I'm going to add on a variable to it. So I made sure to put a space here and then I like spacing because spacing is always nice and it's easy to read. And that's just an and sign. And then our variable name, which is result. And we will hit OK. And let's see if this works. Enter the radius 5. And that should be correct. If we, 5 times 5 is 25 times 3.14 is roughly a little over 75. So that looks to be correct to me. Um, let me zoom in a little bit for y'all. Um, so this has a lot of potential, there's lots of potential to use pseudo globals and programs. Um, I know some tutorials with flow rhythm or with flow charting in general, they use globals all the time to set values. So, and that can get confusing when you're coming into flow rhythm and flow rhythm doesn't have a thing for globals. But just using a function and have it operate as a global, but by having it make the variable, then immediately assign the value in return, that, that way it doesn't have a chance to change that value and you just call it once and then you have it. So it's basically able to act as a global, which is nice. Um, another setting of this, so let's take our math here and move it into a different function. So we'll add, and I'm just going to call this math. Uh, let's see, do I want to add a parameter? Let's add one. We'll have an integer and we're going to call this user number entered. We'll hit OK. OK. Done. So this is, user number entered is automatically declared for us now. So what we can do, uh, we'll do declare result, and that will be a real number. We'll hit OK. And then what we will do, we're going to make this a little complicated on how we do stuff. So with th that being made, we'll do a sign. We we'll do result equals open parentheses user number entered times. I'm just gonna copy this and then paste on the other side. That way just saving me a little bit of time. Uh, notice this is in parentheses. That way, order of operation follows. It does this first. Times our value for pi. And how we're going to call that is pi value set. We'll hit OK. And then I'm just going to go to main and I will copy the output there and go to math and I'm just going to paste it in because result is the same here. Going back to main, 
um, the radius squared, the radius squared, setting the assigned for radius squared pi and result and that alpha, I am just going to cut out because I don't need it at the moment. So it should just be your declares, your alpha, and then your input in main. After that, what we will do is we're just going to call our math function, which will do everything else for us. So we'll do a call and then we'll do math, uh, open and close parentheses, then inside of parentheses, because we assigned a parameter on the function itself, that means we need to pass something into it and we will be passing the user number into it. We'll hit OK. And let's see how this looks now. We will run it. Please enter the radius of a circle to normal. We'll do 5 again. And as we see, we get 78.5. Let me zoom in just a bit more for y'all. So same thing. Um, once again, we're using the global and a function this time. Instead, instead of calling it in the main, we have it set to a function. So it's very nice. It's very handy. Not perfect because if you want a lot of globals, you have to add a function each time, which not sure if there's a limit, but if someone wants to find out, go for it. Have fun. That's what development is all is all about from my perspective. Like have fun with it. That's how you learn. That's how you get new skills. Uh, if y'all have any questions, feel free to let me know. This will be going up on my YouTube, Coding Doctor 101, once again. Um, yeah, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment on the video. Thanks and goodbye.